Hey guys, for my first episode, I will be reviewing my own Ferrari 360. I just picked her up about two to three months ago, and man, it has been a dream. In my opinion, this is the best supercar slash sports car that you can buy today, and you'll hear why. So here's a full glance at her. Now, I've already done some mods, so this is not all stock, but I think these are very tasteful tasteful mods that all Ferrari 360 owners should do. First of all, the wheels, all right? The, the 18 wheels that come out of Ferrari uh, 360, they look a little bit outdated and a little bit small. They're 18 inch, um, and I decided to upgrade it to a 430 wheels, and they look fantastic. Just look at that. These are 19 inch. These are 235s in the front, and those are 295s in the back. And I believe this makes the car look a lot more modern. And the brake calipers and cross drill rotors, standard stock, they already look fantastic. And I mean, just look at that, right? So take a look at the outside shot again. With those 19 inch wheels from the 430, the car just looks perfect. Of course, you guys probably noticed that the windows are tinted. At first, I was actually really against these, and you can still see the inside a little bit, right? But the reason why I tinted it is because it was getting super hot. It was actually getting really hot driving this thing, and after the tint, it made a huge, huge, huge difference, right? So let's walk around. What else did I do on the outside? On the outside, I added a challenge grill. A lot of you guys have seen this, right? You could see right through. <laughs> you could see the muffler right there. You see, this is kind of like vented, right? Um, it lets a lot of heat out. You guys can't feel it, but I just drove this car and this thing is hot to touch. Before, this was all covered and it's all uh, a panel that's body colored, right? And the heat just gets trapped in the engine uh, compartment. And right over here is where the heat comes out of and if you see there's only two on both sides of the glass and that's really not enough it gets really really hot in there right of course in the back you get a beautiful view of the v8 engine and i'm going to open this so you guys could take a look right you got the quad exhaust tips of course all these these vents actually serve a purpose this is actually for the air intake those are for the brakes on the other side of the oil cooler and also for the brakes so none of that is just for looks and just look at the lines the lines of this car just so beautiful this car has a design that'll never get old I, honestly and it's it doesn't come out so much in the pictures or videos but this is a wide car when you're standing in front of it you notice how low and wide to the ground it is and it is just so beautiful to look at. This is one of the reasons why I think this is the best bargain supercar or sports car out there because you tell me, you get a brand new M3, you get a brand new C63, do they look better than this mid-engine supercar? No, they don't. <laughs> Not in my opinion, at least. All right, so let's take a look at it inside. So let's start from the passenger side. So there's a few other things I did already. So interesting enough, right behind that, right, is actually the battery. Um, all these panels, you'll see that all the, the carbon fiber panels, they used to be this silver color, kind of like uh, what that looks like, um, kind of the same color, and it just looks a little bit outdated. So I decided to change everything to carbon fiber, these door panels, the center console, uh, the the radio, the radio gauge and the, the the cluster over there, those have all been changed. And I think, just look at it. The color combination between black and tan just looks perfect. Looks perfect to me. All right. And now you add carbon fiber, looks even better. Of course, you got the big silver Ferrari door sill. Man, that just when you open the door and it says Ferrari. <laughs> uh, that just feels good. Um, also, something really unique. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. You see, you see these, uh, you see these screws, right, in the door panels. 
I actually really love that. There's something about that that just seems more, I guess, racy, okay, like a race car feel, right? And you see them everywhere, even on the radio, like right here, right? And you see them in the gauge cluster as well. So they're all over the place. And I actually really, really love it. You see the screws here? I mean, to me, that just gives a more race car feel. Um, and that could just be me, but I, I love that, right? And there's plenty of room. This car is huge, okay? Plenty of leg room, plenty of uh, um, headroom. And look at this, uh, I replaced this headboard because it was cloth before and it actually peeled off. So I decided to, to bring it to a um, upholstery shop and do this custom black with tan stitching. And I think it came out great, the two-tone. Now, something that you guys might not be aware of, would you pull open the door, the window slides now? So that's kind of cool because actually because there's no there's no frame here it's just just glass they didn't want that to bump up here so looking at the driver's side definitely very roomy very very clean i changed that to yellow it used to just be black so this yellow tachometer that is awesome and the 430s they have a red or yellow and the newer ferraris are all yellow so that just also makes everything look a bit a bit nicer. And you know what? That's pretty much it in this car, okay? In terms of the mods, like I said, I've done some tasteful mods. I think the carbon fiber, the, the headboard, the custom headboard, the wheels, right? Those are things that I think just makes this car even better. So this car is equipped with F1 transmission. So you see the paddle shifters, okay? Up, down, this is pretty standard. And F1 transmission is actually truly a manual except it removes the clutch pedal. So there's no clutch pedal, all right? So um, it does not shift for you unless you press the auto button. Otherwise, all upshifts and downshifts require you to use the pedals. Look at the back. <laughs> how many cars can you look out the back window and see the engine right behind you that is just amazing all right so let's take a look at the engine from the outside and take a look at that just just awesome right so this is the muffler the muffler is right back here you can actually see the headers over there. This is the mid-engine is right behind you. Everything is here. There's no exhaust that's moving from front to back. Everything is here. To, that's the header goes to the, the downpipe that kind of goes to um, the muffler. And that's it. So if you want to do exhaust work, it's very easy. You got the two air filters or air intakes, right? Um, this is not plastic. This is actually metal, right? Almost everything in here is metal. They got these nice Ferrari <laughs> lids, right, or caps. And overall, the engine bay is really big. A lot of people that actually mod this car, believe it or not, yes, people do mod it. Um, if they put a turbo or something, actually, they just remove the muffler and put it right here because there's plenty of space. But, I mean, come on. Look at this engine. Tell me that is not a glorious engine to look at. And this is something that you don't get. You get a brand new sports car today, you get an M3, you're not gonna get a window to see the engine, right? So this is one of the most special features of this car is be able to see the mid-engine behind you while you're in the car and when you're on the outside. It is just a magnificent looking engine. And plus, it's not slow. It generates 400 horsepower, 278 foot-pounds of torque, and with a 3,200, uh, with this car being 3,200 pounds, this car does 0 to 60 in about four and a half seconds and, and quarter mile time around 12.6, 12 12.8. 12 so this is not a slow car, even by today's standards. So, so you guys saw the back, so if you wanna go to the front, you pull down here. Right, and then the engine, where normally the engine would be, is actually the trunk. 
Okay, you got you gotta stick your hand in there. You hit that, and here's the trunk. It's actually pretty big. I got my old mats in there. You got some tools here, but overall this space is big enough for a large a large luggage or a couple luggages. Now I don't think it's wide enough for uh for a golf bag, and that might be important for some people, but it's definitely deep enough. And you got the cabin filter right there. So, and another thing I want to point out, which I think almost no one knows about, is in Ferraris, here, here's a battery cutoff switch. So if you want to disable the battery, you can simply turn that, and that's it. You don't have to actually disconnect it. That is a really, really cool feature, and I've actually used it a couple times. So you guys are probably wondering, how does a Ferrari drive? So let's go out for a ride and I'll explain. When you're driving a Ferrari 360, there is no doubt you're in something special. This is truly, in my opinion, one of the greatest bargain supercars you can buy today. You can find Ferrari 360s in the 60s, 70,000 now, and that is a lot of money, no doubt. But think about this, when you compare it to a brand new Tesla, or M3, or C63, or even some of the Hellcats, or SUVs that's out there, Escalades, they're all above this price range, and you're getting a car that was once $150,000 to $200,000 for now, something that's cheaper than a brand new M3. This car is equipped with the F1 transmission, which means that you're using the paddle shifters to shift. Uh, it will not auto shift for you unless you press the auto button, which is clunky, so you don't want to do that. Um, and basically, it, tug, it, it controls the clutch for you. You don't have a clutch pedal. And I honestly enjoy it, right? When you're up to speed, you can upshift, downshift. Like right now, I'm in sixth gear. Twice, fourth gear, right? One more time, third gear. I mean, its downshifts are extremely quick and upshifts are just as quick. This car is also equipped with sport mode. So if you want a little bit of firmer ride and you want the F1 transmission to shift a little faster, that's for you. Now, overall, it is loud, right? But when you're going and you're cruising at 60, 70 miles per hour, you can definitely hold a conversation. You can turn on your radio and still hear the radio just fine. But of course, it's a little bit louder and you want it to be loud. This sound behind me is, is awesome. You know, the thing about a Ferrari 360, most people have agreed this is the best sounding V8 Ferrari ever produced. Now some might argue 355s, but most people agree it is the 360. The 430s, the 458, the 488 definitely do not come close. As for this car, it came with a 2B exhaust and that is the one mod that everyone does because it makes the car sound even better. And you know, it's something that you feel special. When you're driving this car, you know it's not a normal car. You know that it's something special. It's low to the ground, the steering is heavy, um, it is loud, and you know what? That's what you want in a sports car. I feel like all these sports cars um, that have come out in recent years, they're too tame. They're all electronic, too much luxury features, too quiet, too easy to drive, and it doesn't make you feel special when you're driving. And this car, it, it, it makes you feel so good every time. And I had this car for about two to three months now. And man, this is the best car I've ever owned. Hands down, by far, nothing else compares to this car. Once I get a straightaway here, I'll floor a little bit for you guys so you guys can hear this engine. Man, it revs up to 8,500 and it's like a symphony. Um, it's very different from American V8s. American V8s are more throatier. Um, deeper. This is more a higher pitch, but it's not a V6 or an I4 high pitch. This is more like an F1 high pitch um, because it does rev to 8500 and it just sounds like nothing else out there. And of course, because of the stiff suspension and uh, and the car being so low to the ground, it, it, it like rides on rails. It, it, it has no you know, body movement when you're turning. It is it is awesome around the corners. <laughs> All right, let's 
feel like hey this car only has 400 horsepower and less than 300 uh, foot pounds of torque <laughs> this car is not slow okay this car is 17 years old remember this is a 2001 it has 400 horsepower at the time this was the most advanced v8 in any production car out there forget turbos forget supercharging this is just a natural aspirated engine and you know, even now, with this 400 horsepower, it is not slow. Uh, 0 to 60, about four and a half seconds, quarter mile, a uh, little bit under 13, I think it's like 12, eight, 12, six, somewhere around there. It is not slow. If you're in the right gear and you're taking off, boom, you're, <laughs> you're taking off. Uh, I believe the car is around 3,200 pounds, which is extremely light. Remember I talked about modern cars now. They put so much luxury features and then dampen everything and it's super quiet, which is nice if you're just going on a Sunday stroll, right? Or a Sunday drive, but the cars have ballooned up to like 3,800, 4,000 pounds. And if you're in like an SR8, or, uh, SRT Jeep, you're, you're talking about like 5,000 pounds that you're carrying. So this car, Definitely, even though it has a heavy steering feel, um, it is nimble and it is extremely fast. I mean, let's, let's be honest, unless you're tracking the car and you really need 500 or 600 horsepower on tap, 400 horsepower is more than enough for daily driving. Driving a Ferrari definitely uh, gathers a lot of attention. Everywhere I go, I see people take out their phones or staring and saying, hey, nice car. Um, and those, those are things uh, I enjoy. If you're in a Ferrari, it's special. And, um, and most people, they don't, they don't even know what year this is, okay? So that's another reason why the Ferrari 360 is the perfect budget supercar. So those people that are not, not car enthusiasts, they see this as a brand new Ferrari. I get so many looks and people asking, oh, how much did you pay for it? Thinking that this is a brand new Ferrari. And when I tell them it's 17 years old, they cannot believe it. The body, the, the lines, you know, the color, the paint, everything is just perfect. And people just love it. And for those people that are car enthusiasts, they love this car too because um, it's a Ferrari in terms of just the overall drive, performance, sound, just sounds amazing. And having a mid-engine, the engine right behind your head, you don't get that feel from a lot of cars. Just listen to that. Listen to that. Man, it's so, so good sounding. I never thought in a million years that I would be driving or even owning a Ferrari. Growing up, this was a poster. <laughs> uh, this was a poster on my bedroom wall. Um, and I think for a lot of people, this is a dream car. Well, guess what, 17 years later, I'm now driving it. And I'm telling you guys, this is actually affordable. This is cheaper than some of the new sports cars out there. And I believe this is a better bargain than all of them. Now, some of you guys might be thinking, what about maintenance, right? How is maintenance in this car? Well, I've asked before, I've done actually, I've done a lot of research on the forums and I've asked the dealership before I bought it. And it's really not that bad, guys. I've owned a lot of cars in the past, Lexuses, BMWs, Mercedes, um, a lot of the German cars and American cars. And I know, you know, in terms of a market price for oil changes, time and belt changes and so forth, Ferrari is pretty much the same. Yes, there is a little bit of a premium, um, but still, considering that you're servicing a Ferrari versus say like a BMW, there's really not that much price difference, okay? Uh, in this car, in the 360, they made a timing belt really easy to change. You flip open the seats and there's a cover right here that you simply open and you could do it yourself. Oil changes, brakes, those are all standard. If you guys um, are DR wires, right? You work on your own cars, you could definitely maintain a Ferrari. There's some videos out there that say, hey, you know, you shouldn't touch a Ferrari until you get used to it and so forth. That's nonsense. All cars are cars. 
they're built so that they can be repaired and it's really no different changing the brakes on this car compared to a Ford Taurus or a Nissan Pathfinder. They're all the same. So conclude this video. I honestly believe this Ferrari 360 is the best bargain supercar out there. I mean, honestly, I, I can't think of any car that is within this price range that gives you the, the performance, the sound, the tension. Um, it has it all. It has a timeless design that is still looking brand new after 17 years, and I don't believe it'll age at all. And another benefit too is these cars are actually going up in value. I've been looking at 360s for the past 10 years and honestly they have been going up in the last 10 years because people are now starting to collect Ferraris and realizing how good they are since they have come down in price so dramatically um, from when they were new. So honestly, if you guys get a, a Ferrari 360, you're probably going to make money when you decide to sell it so that's additional benefit um and that's it guys hopefully you guys enjoyed this review of my ferrari 360 this has been a dream car so far i'm going to be making other videos about this car and i'm going to be making videos about other cars so definitely stay tuned for that all right take care guys Bye bye